So this time we are going to add in a much more dynamic ball. And this ball's rotation is going to be important. So we can't just have a ball that is plain white or just monocolored everywhere because you can't see how the, uh, the rotational velocity is. So what we're going to do is use the roller ball in the standard assets. So go to new project. You're going to have to make a new project, but I've already made one and called it standard asset import. So I'm going to get the save a step here. As soon as this loads up, uh, I am going to go to the asset store and show you exactly where to find the standard assets and how to download it and import it, which I've already done. You can see there. Just type standard. There we go. So that's the one I want. I'm curious. Oh, look at that. It's the first hit for ass as well. All right. So quite the popular package. You will hit import. Well, you'll hit download first. Five minutes later, you'll hit import. You want to get everything that comes in with this. It's going to take a minute because it is decompressing 182 megabyte file. And I believe it's probably also going to parse it out at the same time. And it's going to give us a list of the content. You're just going to import everything. But in the future, you could import less if you don't want to. I've already imported everything. So yours should be completely filled up with checks. It won't let me put checks everywhere. It should just default to checked everything and then hit import. That's all you need to do. I did modify a scene somewhere. Sample scene. Here we go. I did modify a scene. So I want to get back to... There we go. They even knew which one I modified. So I did modify that scene. But you should have everything checked. <clears throat> the scene I modified is the one I had open. I hit reload here. All right, so we're back in this scene. There's quite a few cool things here that uh, I'd like to basically get all of them. Notice there's two lights right here. It's a nice way to create, uh, have a well-lit scene. Uh, three lights is the way they do it in Hollywood, but uh, it takes a little more processing power depending on how you have your lighting set up. So two lights is a pretty solid way to go for, for now. So I do need the touch controls. We're mainly just trying to get the roller ball out of here. Um, and I'll import uh, cameras and the dual cut touch controls a slightly different way. So why is this a cool asset? Check it out in their default setup right here. You Get control over the ball's uh, rotational velocity. You're, I believe, adding torque to it. And it has a nice little skid factor right here. This is using the default physics materials, which we will change around. It also has a jump in it, and it doesn't let you jump when you're not near the ground. If you jump too early, you'll jump when you're still falling down. And then that... Uh, kind of cancels out. You want to let yourself hit the ground if you want to jump as high as possible. So it does let you do cool stuff like kind of jump. Oh, hit it too late right there. But if you do jump when you're oh, already kind of going up, it does give you a nice extra big jump. And I like that factor. So basically this is how I want my first level to be. And then right here will be the end of the level. Get out of here. I do want to look at the material right here. So I am on the roller ball. You can double click it if you want to zoom in. This is the sphere collider, not the actual uh, mesh, the sphere mesh. So I want to change. This is the default physics material. 
this is missing, but there is a default. You can change it in the settings. It's kind of a neutral material. I go ice. I'll put ice on the ball, and this should have a major effect. You also can put the ice on the ground instead of the ball, and you have different areas of the ground that have different materials on them. So as you can see, I can quickly change the way the ball is rotating, but that takes a very long time to change the way the ball is moving. I'm kind of going around in a circle here. All right. And you click on it once, and it takes you to the physics materials. So this is a nice set right here, a nice good set. So I'd like to grab all these physics materials, plus here's the roller ball. And you can find it easily. Just right click on the roller ball, select prefab, boom, goes right to the roller ball. I'm going to be exporting. So I need to uh, select dependencies. I don't know why it didn't grab the textures here. It makes me a little nervous. So what I'm going to do, so basically grab the one material rubber, and it grabs almost everything in the rollerball folder. I am going to be save and grab everything in the rollerball folder. So I'm just going to click at the folder level. And I want all the physics materials, so I'm going to click. I use control click so I can highlight them at the same time. I'm going to get everything in the rollerball folder, everything in the physics material folder. I'm going to need other things too, but I'll show you different ways to import those. So just hit export pa package. Um, the physics materials don't have dependencies, and I've, I've already checked the dependencies by inspecting what's inside rollerball folder. <clears throat> you do not want to reselect dependencies. It will import a whole lot of stuff you don't want. Basically, whatever you see on the list with a check mark is what's going to be exported when I hit the button. This is a whole lot of stuff I don't want. This is exactly what I didn't want, is all this extra junk. It's not, it's not actually junk, but it's not things I want right now. So I'm going to uncheck dependencies. Now you can see exactly, basically, the rollerball folder and the physics materials folder. This is the standard assets. Uh, project folder, do not put this in the assets folder. Uh, I made a second folder called exports, and I have already had an old one saved. It wasn't exactly what I wanted, so I'm going to overwrite the old one. But I, I, I'm going to call it standard rollerball, and then you need packages. File extension. Should be tiny. 206 kilobytes right there. Uh, I exported cameras, but I'm not going to use them. There's a better way to import them. Alright, so this is basically all we did was create this file right here. It's a tiny file, so it's not going to add much to our project. Now we're opening our rollerball. I did change some material in the scene. I don't really want to keep that change. I really just want this to go back to absolutely standard like default settings. So I'm going to hit don't save. On. They're just asking me about the scene, basically. We're trying to build a platformer, and this ball is going to be our character. So first thing, I don't even see this as a prefab, or as the selected prefab, so let's go ahead and make a prefab, because I don't want to just lose this. The game prefabs, all right. Now, if I want to bring it back, even though I deleted it in my scene, it's super easy. Just drop it right there, it comes back in. So I deleted it from my scene, but it's not gone forever. Uh, I don't really want to overwrite the scenes I'm making, so I'm going to go save scene as, and we'll call this uh, platform one. Maybe plat one will be a little easier. We want to make it in the same folder. So it'll show up right there as plat one. Alright. We're now gonna grab the 
package that we just created. We're going to be getting some other types here too. If I hit characters, I would get the rollerball and the airplane and the car and all this other stuff I don't need. So we're just going custom. Go up. So here's the project I'm working on. There's the standard asset import project I just made a minute ago. Just export this folder. And there's the rollerball. It should be the stack files you're expecting. Nothing surprising. Going to put it in the same folders, so there'll be a new folder created, the standard assets, and everything will be nice organized in there. I recommend, if, especially if you're going to be importing maybe a different version of these later, that you don't move this file name around. It causes weird things to happen sometimes. So things I import, I try not to move around unless the one thing I will do is I sometimes put a root folder in, like I have a folder called imports. And then I'll put everything I import. It'll cause some problems. Yep. So we just cause some problems by doing that. So again, I recommend don't really change folder names uh, of things you're importing. All right, so how do we get the rollerball in here? You can drag it in here, or you can drag it right to there. All right, let's hit play and see what happens. Oh no. So we're going to check out what happens. I double clicked on that red text at the bottom. Now, I want to dock the console. I have a feeling I'll see some more errors as we go. All right, cross. Platform input does not exist in the namespace. So when you cross platform input, I could go back and figure out what that was in the old project uh, or the project that I imported uh, from. But instead, we're going to import it in a slightly different way. Here we go. Cross platform input. Boom. And I'm going to get everything out of here. There's some of these I don't necessarily need right now. It's nice to pay attention to where they're going to go. This is going to litter my project, or my standard assets folder a little bit. I'm going to put a cross-platform input editor and fonts in there. So it should take care of this cross-platform input issue. <clears throat> now if you notice our rollerball has now a shader on it, and when this is done importing we'll look at that. Render, there we go. Right, so that's the material that's on it. Um, I could put a white on it if I want to. Let's check this out. All right, the variable player of camera controller has not been assigned. So double click that and it will take us to the error. Was a problem. Which one of those? Player. Alright, so it doesn't know what player is. Object player, so it was never assigned. So I could uh, assign it in code or I could assign it in the inspector. So here's what it looks like in the inspector. My main camera. Here is the camera controller script we were looking at. Here's player. I can drag in rollerball, boom, right to there. This is all it takes. Uh, I don't really want to do that though. So unclicking something is kind of annoying. Uh, oh, you can hit delete. All right, it's not that annoying. I want to do that in the script though. How in the world do I get the camera? Oh, here we go. Camera. Let's see what it can do. There we go. Uh, I probably want the transform of that. And that will be player.
That's weird. I would have made player a transform. Okay. I want to keep the game object though. Lowercase game object because it's the not the class game object, but the particular game object object attached to the current camera. All right, so that should take care of that issue when I hit play. Hopefully that was the only one. Looks like there was a second error. All right, looks like we're back to all the errors. Good. Did that player last? All right, we'll just do it in the inspector. Should act just like the camera in the last uh, in the version of the game we were playing before. Now, what this doesn't do is hit the actual pickups. So it is passing through them. It's probably hitting the collider, but we have no uh, collision detection script on this new ball right here. So that's what we're going to change. Good news is we have a script that does basically what we want. Not that it is. Player controller. Okay. I'm going to use player controller. Just double click that. And I definitely want to attach it to the roller ball. So I'm going to lose a prefab connection. That's okay. Kind of strange, but if, I, if you add it at the very bottom, you don't lose the prefab. Uh, when you reorder things that were in the prefab, that's when you lose it. Not too important for us right now. All right, so we're going to edit this file. Well, what I definitely don't need is a second update. I'm already going to be moving the ball with the scripts that came with uh, that prefab. So I don't need an additional update. And if you look, all the code I've highlighted is just move code. It doesn't have anything to do with collisions. So I'm going to let the other scripts that we will check out, I'm going to let the other scripts handle movement. And this is going to basically just do the on trigger. It's going to activate on the pickups and it's going to set the count text. It's basically our game logic. Uh, I no longer need a rigid body. Actually, it will need a rigid body to enforce those collisions, but I don't think I actually need to get the comp. Well, whatever. We'll leave it on here. Maybe you want to use some properties of it later. I think that's all we're going to change. <clears throat> Even though we didn't do very much, we, we took out the fixed update, and that will... putting Having a fixed update makes your game object cause the game to run a little bit slower, because it runs every single frame. Uh, an update actually runs several times... Uh, fixed update runs, I think, once every 30th of a second, and update runs more frequently than that, and it's also a variable amount. So you want to avoid putting any code in update or fixed update. And that's why I showed you coroutines. That's a way to do things uh, periodically without checking if conditions in uh, update methods. All right, so this uh, player controller is done. The only problem with it is it's not really a controller. It kind of manages the game logic now. So I think maybe player manager is a better name for it. Now we got a problem because the, this has to match the file name. So I have to change two things. The first thing I'm going to do is hit F2. And that is rename. That's going to let me change this to player manager. And then hit enter when you're done editing that. The reason I didn't just edit this uh, in a normal normal way but I didn't just go in and delete a bunch of that and then change this to whatever I wanted I did F2 because that also change any references any other files used I don't think in pickup that I referenced this but maybe if I did it'll it'll auto correct that as well all right so our player controller should be complete let's see if it actually hits these pickups
That's pretty miserable. On. Better pick up. Let's pick up script. Roller ball. Your collider. Whoa. There we go. So it's a perfect time to talk about when things break. So if the script can't be compiled, sometimes it basically kind of unloads itself. It's still here, but it's it not able to compile so it doesn't show up in the standard way that we're used to. Alright, so the reason is I changed the name to player manager. I have to change the file name as well. So that'll get me to player controller. This needs to be called player manager. Turn that volume down. Let's see what our rollerball looks like now. There we go. It auto updated. That's player manager. Uh, ooh, now I need count text and win text. Those are somewhere around here. Canvas, count text, win text. All right, perfect. I don't know which one this is. So it's count text, of course. So that's win. All right, so this should, I don't think I need speed. That's probably something I don't need anymore. Ah, it also closed down here because the file name changed. Speed, all right. And we're not moving anymore here, so it's really pointless to have speed. All right, so that takes care of <clears throat> the game logic. Now let's talk about um, the code in the ball. We got rubber on the sphere collider, rigid body. This uh, drag and angular drag will slow it down over time. So those definitely can be fun to play with. Uh, you could turn off gravity. Generally, you don't want to do that permanently. Well, I don't know, maybe if there's some weird thing going on. Uh, but I want to look at, we know all about player manager. That should be working fine. Basically, these two files, ball and ball user controller. So there is a jump power. Check out jump. Well, that's probably not the right scale for this game. I one. That's not the right either. Two. That seems pretty good. All right. One thing uh, this controller is fun for is that you kind of get. I did not hitting jump. I'm just using the built-in physics of what happens when you hit a wall. It almost feels like those walls are shorter. I can jump up and over it with enough speed. All right. So here's jump. Uh, what you don't get with this control style is the ability to move your ball in the air. So if you're going quick and you jump, well, we didn't really account for that. Uh, so if we're going to have a jump, we're going to also have to have a way to deal with the jump. So we'll deal with that a little bit later. Let's just clean up the way the ball works right now. We have ball and ball user control. We're just going to read through this. So we have a rigid body. We get in start. Uh, we're going to set the angular velocity, max angular velocity here. But there's no reason to call get component. That takes a, a lot of clock cycles to get a component. So we're just going to use the rigid body we already got. All right, it has a move method. And this move notice is not update here. So it's not going to get called automatically. So this takes a vector and a boolean, whether or not you're jumping. If we're using torque, then we're going to add a torque, a rotational force. And if we're not using torque, we're going to add regular force. So this second one acts just like the uh, ball that we wrote in the uh, original tutorial. What I really want is this new one right here. So 
the math of this could be a little bit annoying, so that's why I really wanted to just import it so it works. Now when it comes to jump, uh, you check if the jump key is pressed. I'm going to reorder this, actually. Uh, this is going to shoot a ray. It's going to shoot a ray from our position, negative up, also known as down. And the um, distance it's going to check is uh, ground ray length. <clears throat> this is a hard-coded in right here as one. Uh, that'll work for this ball, but if you're going to change the scale of the ball, you may want to change this a little bit. Uh, also, if you run across like a small, like a balance beam type of object, you're going to have to be kind of in the middle of the balance beam in order to be able to jump because it's going to shoot a ray, a one-dimensional line segment downwards. So it's only going to hit what's directly below you. So if you're kind of half off an edge, it will not hit anything and not let you jump. All right, first thing, checking a uh, jump is true or false is way faster than doing a ray cast. So if jump is false, this will short circuit evaluate to false and it won't even do a ray cast and then be done in here. All right, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, you can always change these in the inspector because again they're all serialized so we can adjust those later not worry about any of those so we're done in here now we're going to the user controller this has a couple uh, things to pay attention to first of all it has a ball which is what we just looked at I don't think they required the uh, component on here so let's go ahead and do that right now I don't think we use a rigid body in this script, so it doesn't really make sense to require it here. Uh, what you could do, uh, it looks like we are basically assuming that you have a ball attached to the ball user control, so it looks like a reasonable uh, requirement to, it, there should be a ball attached to this. All right, so now we're basically guaranteed that the ball will exist. Uh, we're going to need a camera. Uh, we're going to need uh, the camera photo to be computed off cam. And then jumps, just a Boolean. All right, so awake, we just get the ball. Uh, so if camera main's not null, um, it'll get the main camera. If not, it'll put a warning on the screen. All right, this looks a little bit different than you're used to. This cross-platform input manager basically generalizes input. The method call part should look familiar. So it does exactly what it looks like it's going to do. It's gonna grab the uh, two axis uh, inputs. And for the standard setup, it's gonna be WS for vertical and AD for horizontal. Jump is the spacebar by default. The advantage of using cross-platform input manager is that it will work really well in mobile. You'll be able to build from mobile later. And not have to change your code. All right, so if camera's not null, this uh, uses basically it's relative to the camera. So it looks for the forward direction of the camera, does some computations, uh, and then moves based on uh, the vertical and horizontal uh, components multiplied by the forward and the right respectively. So it's basically it localizes your horizontal and vertical as to where the camera's pointing uh, because your user is going to assume when they push forward it's going to rotate the ball forward the way they're looking at the ball. Hopefully that makes sense. And again if they push horizontal to the right they're going to want to move to the right of the camera's perspective. Um, else, meaning there is no camera, um, then hopefully you would, that would make sense. Uh, we should always have a camera though. All right, a fixed update is called once every physics update, and this is what's calling the move. And then it does set jump to false. All right, <clears throat> when we do jump, uh, 
I want to make sure we don't double jump. So I'd like to add a cooldown to the jump. Because I don't know if the jump will actually be successfully triggered here. Where I'm going to look for that jump, cooldown is over in the ball. And here's where we actually for real jump. We do some check up here, but here's where we actually jump. So what I'm going to do is call a coroutine here that uh, will wait a certain amount of time. And we'll put a uh, jump cooldown right here. Down. Let's do one sec. Uh, one second. Yeah. Works. You could do an if statement in here and kind of run a timer every single uh, move, which will basically we just saw be called every fixed update. But that's gonna be horribly inefficient. So that's why I'm doing a coroutine here now. <clears throat> coroutines, we're going to be using timing. I remember having a coroutine back in pickup. So I could go look at the documentation or I could just do what I uh, did before basically. So we're going to do this. I'll call it animation. This is. Jump uh, timer. Sounds good. All right, so we got a lot of errors. Fantastic. Let's fix them using mech. That's one thing we need to do. And the second thing we need to do, and again, I'm generating these methods because there's a pretty good chance I wouldn't type a lot of this correct. All right, I'm not going to throw new one of these. All right, what we were doing before. Oh, man. Pick up. There we go. We were wait for one frame. So I do need to return, do a yield return. I don't want to wait for one frame though. I want to wait for jump cooldown seconds. Let's see if I can get this without looking at the documentation. Probably going to include the word wait. Oh, look at that. Wait for Seconds, but turn over seconds, perfect. Wait for seconds, boom, boom, boom. All right, so this will basically do nothing for that many seconds. Then I'm going to reset uh, some Boolean. So jump is probably not the Boolean I want to use. Uh, how about can jump? That sounds like a great name. I don't really want to serialize this. Jump equals true. There we go. So all I need to do is jump and can jump and all right. Now, I put whichever one first is most likely going to be false. Uh, so they're, most of the time, I'm going to assume that can jump is actually going to be true. All right, so when the heck is can jump going to turn false? Let's do it right after we add the force. All right. So we set it to false when we jump, and then immediately start a timer that counts one second and then sets can jump to true. All right, feel pretty good about that part. Now, if you notice, if you don't wait until the ball actually stops, 
Let's do the uh, cool down a little lower. <clears throat> cool down. Let's go zero. Let's get crazy. I want to see if they actually let me do multi jumps here. Looks like it. All right, so I'm just holding the space bar down. Now that cool down. It's probably not the uh, behavior we really want. I think it's also letting me double jump. All right, so I'm going to go jump cooldown 0.5. I think that seems reasonable. I wouldn't get an accidental double jump on the ground with that. Might be even too high or too frequent. Now, so it was basically probably jumping four or five times before. Now that I'm only jumping once, I'm holding the space bar down. I need to increase the jump power quite a bit. That seems pretty reasonable. All right, notice it didn't save it. So don't make too many changes in play mode if you're intending to save them. All right, there's also a use torque option. I can turn that off and it should control a lot like the ball that we had made. And now I should get some control in the air. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, let's crank up a uh, jump power and move power. Now it should be a little more obvious in the air. Whoa. All right. So, <clears throat> I could, in the air, um, allow both types of movement in the code if I wanted to. All right. Ah, like that. We were parsing scene one, and now we're in plat one. I think if I put an F in there, that'll solve the problem. Because we'll have five letters and then a number. So I have these plaft. It's a hard word to say, but I'll try to load plaft two. I have a feeling. Nope. Looks like we hard coded that in. All right. Uh oh. Ah, this one won't work anymore because our player uh, we took out the movement in the. We turned that player controller into a player manager so these guys aren't going to move anymore all right this is in a good spot and it's a good place to end